OpenFlexure is an incredible open source project that brings to lower cost and accessible microscopes to education in third world countries. There are a few different builds that can be done of an OpenFlexure microscope ranging from a simple optical microscope with manual controls to high resolution optics using the same objective lenses as modern microscopes with motorized autofocus, XY movement, and a camera to record what's seen. I have chosen the motorized lower resolution optics build with Raspberry Pi Camera 2. This build lets you relatively inexpensively have a microscope that can take several pictures of a sample. These pictures can be stitched together with other software automatically into a larger picture. When I set out to build this microscope, I found it would have been helpful to have a guide that focused on the specific build. I will take you from the beginning of all things you need for this build all the way through the process of stitching together pictures taken by the microscope. I hope you find it both helpful and informative. And here is a quick view of all the things you will need. Tools, printed parts, the motors, Raspberry Pi, something to look at, power. And here is a list of the parts that you'll need to print. Uh, note that I did use PETG, uh, but they say that PLA works well as well. Uh, and I mentioned this later in the video, but uh, make sure you print the sample clips twice. Uh, they're actually two different parts, and I prefer one of them. Here's a list of the non-printed parts you will need. Note that uh, I did try the Raspberry Pi 3 but I found it was running out of RAM and crashing uh, due to what I believe is the um, higher resolution Pi Camera V2. So uh, I suggest going with the Pi 4 2 gigabyte version. Okay, really quickly for the Arduino code loading on the, to the Nano, when you download the files, make sure that you have them renamed. When I download them from uh, online, they were had longer names, and you can get errors when you try to load them. So see what I have here, make sure your files look like that. Uh, then in the IDE for Arduino, make sure you select the Nano as the device that you're writing to. Select the COM port. Uh, I find it's usually like one of the highest numbers you can see in the list. And then click that button to load it. Now download the image for the Raspberry Pi and burn it with the Etcher software to your SD card. All right, so I am assembling the actuators. <clears throat> this is one of the main piece, the actuator piece. It is amazing what they're doing with Flexure, the, the thing that gives Open Flexure its name. So you can see that uh, the control is going to be here, and when it pulls on this, it's moving in that axis. And this one over here is going to move it that direction. So X and Y are controlled, the two controls that will be here. And then Z here, this one, is going to move this control in here that you can just barely see. And that's where the camera will be, so that provides autofocus capability. Okay, now uh, a couple of these tools are printed. These are going to help push these um, O-rings into place, and this helps push the nut into place. And so, let's get started. See, I was pulling on this and so it made it so the nut wouldn't go in. All right. Pieces here that we need. These are the little feet. 
and notice that one of them is not like the other. Let's see here. This one right here in for the middle is a little bit different at a different angle. All right, now, this is a really interesting part. So we're gonna take these and shove them in to hook onto little hook pieces in there. Now, when you first printed this piece, you are going to need to clip um, or use this to snap. By just pressing this in here, it will snap some bridges that are in there uh, that are part of the printing process. So let's see, we want to make sure we get this right and hopefully you have a few extras just in case you screw up. Um, let's make sure these look right. Nope, this one goes here, this one goes here. And what I'm looking for is that it is straight down. The whole line is straight there. This middle one is different. The two on the sides are the same. Okay, so now I'm going to take the O-ring and their little uh, hook pieces on here. Let's see here. It's a good way to do this. Okay, how about I loop it through here. And then afterwards, when it's tight, I want the uh, O-ring resting in there. Now I'm going to stick this in here. Let me get a good shot. Of this. Okay. So that's that's how I want to be able to just push down and <clears throat> it's going to then hook onto you were going to hear a click. Not hearing a click. There it is. All right, so I, I, I used my finger and held this down here. Okay, this is the basic optics module. I have the Raspberry Pi camera version two, but it can also be used, uh, done with the version one. This is a tool you can print to help you work with this, um, this piece because it's pretty fragile. It's gonna help you hold on to it. Uh, this ribbon is fragile, be careful with that. Um, this tool comes with the Raspberry Pi camera two. It does not come with the version one. Um, but you can print this tool to help you do the same thing that this does with version one. And then this is the mount uh, that we'll use, uh, we'll connect here. So we'll get started here. What we do is we take this lens off, it unscrews. This is pretty cool. So we'll use this tool to go on top here. And then we wanna be careful at, because it can get dusty. So this is the um, sensor that we need to keep clean. And this lens, this lens is going to go this way. I'm going to press it in here. I think we want it to be flat. Flat and tight in there as best we can. I 
I never really got the lens in there very tight before. Let's see. Doesn't look straight in there. Well, we'll go with that. Okay, looks like we're going to have the cable coming out this opposite side. Okay. And there. We're going to put that all together that way. M3s. So I'm going to slide the nut there. Slide that in there. Finding this tool to be real helpful too. So this is uh, this is going to let us mount the camera to the actuator part, the main the main part here. Camera is going to sit in here. Let's see if we can get a good, good view of that. It's going to sit in here so that the z-axis can move it up and down a little bit for focus, and so that um, that bolt is going to rest in here. Now, they actually worked in an access point here. They don't really mention that, so I wanted to point that out if you look straight down here. So I'm gonna be able to get the Allen wrench down in here to tighten this piece up. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, so looking at that, looks like it is just barely below the surface there. So now rotating this is going to move that up and down. Okay, now we're doing the illumination module. Now this is not the reflective uh, illumination module, just more of a straight one. Uh, so we need a uh, tool we'll need for, for the bolts. Uh, I have a five millimeter white LED it's pretty bright and I went with a 100 ohm uh, the open flexure instructions will say a 60 ohm I've seen other people say 80 is fine I'm having uh, I'm doing fine with a hundred so somewhere in there seems to be just fine okay now this tool that you print is for pushing on the objective lens uh, the condenser lens they call it and I just ha it just hasn't arrived in like two months. So uh, I have been able to get pictures out of this that are pretty good, but by having the condenser lens here, it will help brighten the pictures you're taking so that you have better um, contrast and can get better results. So um, uh, you would press, you would use this to help press the lens in here as tight as possible. And what that's doing is it's taking the light from up here that's shining down into the condenser lens and it's going to spread it out to be even um, over the sample piece. So now this part just slides right over here and I would note that it's a little loose. So an improvement that I would uh, suggest is doing something like uh, drilling a hole straight through and putting a long bolt, maybe getting a 30 millimeter uh, bolt that you could put across here to tighten it to really grab on there. Uh, but I didn't have any to try that out. 
for the most part, I can get this to stay in place, and a piece of tape probably will work just fine. So this will go on something like this. Tape. piece of tape to just hold that light in place and now this uh, cord needs to be up to about it needs to be at least 11 inches to um, 12 inches and that is going to plug into the Raspberry Pi to get its power Okay, and that is the illumination module. All right, now is the sample clips. That's these here, and they get mounted here, or here, or anywhere, really. Uh, what I found, though, is that uh, I had to drill out these holes. Uh, none, using even the shorter 10 millimeter length uh, bolts, I... Um, I couldn't mount these. Let's see if I put it through here, and then I put that put that in. There's just way too much play in there for it to be tight. So what my solution was to use a eighth inch drill bit and to drill all the way through these holes, and then so, and I recommend using these in the center. The, the center most ones on the outside uh, but I would probably drill out a few more so you can play with it uh, if you want to so uh, I ended up using these uh, the 25 millimeter length bolts to go through the top and bottom holes and then go here and tighten that up and what that does by using those um, those far out centered uh, holes is that you get more space for your sample slide. Um, if it's here, I found it was just too tight a space for the sample um, to fit. The other thing to note about these sample clips is that the STL model, it looks like it, it should be two solid um, models, two solid pieces when it comes out, but it, the two that it's printing, one of them has this um, interesting gap here, and I could see how it might be useful in some cases, um, but it's been problematic for me. It doesn't, doesn't fit quite as well, so I'd suggest printing that twice so that you can get two of these, uh, this style. Anyway, Okay, so now we will connect the light and camera to the Raspberry Pi board and mount it inside the housing. So, let's see, I'll lift, lift this piece up here for the ribbon cable. And I'll put the ribbon cable in. See, I'm putting the, the pins on this side. And once they're in there, then we push down on that plastic piece to lock it in place. Now for the LED, we're going to use the second and third pins on the outside here. So not this first pin, but the second and third pins. The second pin is going to be power, it's going to be positive, that's my green, and blue is ground, the LED. Okay, so that's what we have right now. And these are going to, get, this is going to get mounted in here. tried to do it this way before, so let's see if it works. And that screwdriver.
Okay, a little trick I learned here is <clears throat> you can put, if you have a strong earth magnet, you can just attach it to your screwdriver and that will help hold your screw on. Now we will attach the motors. We want to put, I have a little bit of painter's tape I've put around the end here, just enough to get this to be snug on there. We don't want it falling off. See, the motor is going to be mounted like this, and if it was too loose, this would just drop right off. So, we're going to do that. We have, let's get this first one on here. There we go. All right, now we're going to do the motor controller part. Uh, now note that there is a enclosure that you can print that would go right underneath all of this. That go like that for the controller parts. However, uh, I was not able to get all of these individual motor controllers to fit in here along with the Nano to uh, work with them and all of the wires. So it's actually designed really well for a Sanga board, which is a custom board that has all three of these controllers built into it. Uh, and then you mount the uh, Nano there. However, you can't get those right now. They're uh, in the forum. You can go uh, add your support. They're trying to get a bulk purchase together. So if you're interested, uh, you can head over and see if they're still doing that. So my solution was to put all of those guts on the outside. So I was just going to use some double-sided tape, sticky stuff here on a, a board, and use a, a mini breadboard here. And this was just large enough for all the connections that I needed. So um, I'm going to be placing the microscope here. The Nano is going to go here. So I'll put that on now. Okay, and I'm going to put the uh, first pin all the way at the very end here. Uh, and for if you're trying to do this exactly the way I am, I only have one row of pins showing easily out the, this side. Now on the uh, documentation you'll find on online, it shows that the software for the Nano is set up for the x-axis to be plugged in here, the y-axis to be plugged in next, and then the z-axis to be plugged in. Now what I'm also going to do on this uh, red board is run a power bar. So I'm going to run plus five or plus seven, seven and a half and uh, ground in the first and then second bar of power. And that doesn't touch the Nano. It doesn't touch any of the pins of the Nano. And so I have taken these and uh, pulled them off into strips of two for power and four for the uh, stepper motor controllers. Um, I don't necessarily have X, Y, and Z though plugged in this way because of how the wires, um, how the wires reach. So let's see here. This is going to block the view. Let's, let's do this. Try it out here. <coughs> Turn this way. Make sure we're still. All right. So this wire. So this is the x-axis, so this would normally have to be plugged in all the way up here at the top, but that isn't going to work so well. So I am going to put it at the bottom, and I want to be mindful of this gear rotating here. I don't want these wires to rub against it, so I'll probably need to put a piece of tape here to hold those wires down. So x is actually going to be here, so that means x has to be plugged into the top.
So we need two power sources. Uh, one to, for the motors to keep them isolated from the power for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so I found this power supply, which I like quite a bit, and it lets you set the voltage. And so I've set it to seven and a half. Even though these are five volt motors, I found during auto calibration that they couldn't turn these motors at all at five. At six and uh, up to seven and a half, there is a little bit of struggle, but seven and a half seems to be the least amount of voltage I need to provide for it. So I'm going to plug this in and that will then get plugged into here. And that becomes the power for my motors. And again, I'm plugging these into the top bar and the, and the second bar down, which is where I've done my interconnection of plus and minus for the motors. And that will just stick out here. Now I'm going to plug in, this is the data connection, the USB. And this will be uh, identified by the Raspberry Pi software to see that the Nano is connected and then it will be able to issue commands to the stepper motors. All right, we're gonna plug it in for the first time. Okay, I'm going to go with the default that OpenFlexer uses, which is OpenFlexer. And I do have a black border. I'm going to skip Wi Fi since I'm hardwired on my network. And I'm going to skip this software update. Yeah, it will restart, sure. Right. Okay, this is good. We can see the uh, preview uh, from the camera. And I'm going to connect locally. There's the preview. Now, a uh, problem that I keep encountering is that that preview is in front of all the other windows, so I have to move the window behind it out. And I'm going to skip the tour, and I'm going to do calibration. Okay, so the lens shading calibration needs to happen first, uh, but you need to not have a sample on the microscope. Let's do calibrate. And we want to make sure that our illumination is in the position we want it to be in. And sure, we'll go with that. Right, it has calibrated the lens shading. I'm going to click next. Now it needs to do the camera stage mapping, and that one we do need a sample. And it wants us to have the picture should be pretty well in focus, which means that we've um, we have the camera moved to pretty close to in focus before we even start the calibration. So I'm going to do that and now I'll click auto calibrate. Now while this is happening I'm uh, usually I'm watching the motors to make sure that when I hear sounds that they're actually moving and you're gonna see lights on the motor controllers light up 
That'll get started in just a moment here. Hmm. All right, well, we got this error. So there's a problem sending commands or getting these motors to actually move. I'm gonna do some troubleshooting. Okay, doing a little wire wiggling. It looked like I had a loose cable. So let's try that again. I'm gonna do a calibrate. Start. And let's see. We can see some light action going on here with one of the motor controllers. I saw this one move. There it is. We can see that the picture is moving now. And now I want to take a tiled picture set. So let's click on capture. Let's go with full resolution. We'll store the raw data that can help from what I understand in the stitching software. And down here, I'm sure we'll do fast focus and let's do the snake style. Alright, it finished the scan. So now we have a set of pictures in the gallery. Refresh. Right here. There's all these pictures. So the next step is to transfer these to my other computer where uh, we can stitch them together. All right, now I am, I need to copy all of those pictures that were taken over to my desktop where I have Microsoft's image composite editor. That software will stitch them all together into a bigger picture. Uh, so I have connected to my Pi I have um, navigated to var, open flexure, data, micrographs, and the folder that it created with all the pictures. And I've copied those over, I dragged those over here in FileZilla to my local folder. Now let's open image composite editor. We'll create a new one here. And I had a couple of errored images. That's okay though. I'm going to click next. This is the using the default settings. All right, and now it's showing us this is the big picture. Again, I'm going to use all the default settings here. And now I'll export disk, go back a folder. And we have a larger image created by all of those smaller images. So to conclude, you have seen what you need for a microscope that can autofocus, take several pictures to be made into one bigger image, and do it for about $200. I hope you found it informative. Are you inspired to build your own? Do you know a curious student who is just perfect for a microscope like this? Please like, share, and subscribe to help spread the word about this incredible project that is changing the world.